All right then. So, tonight I'll be talking about the moon, how this ties to the UFOs, cattle mutilations, werewolves, vampires, moon female deities, and how this all ties to Satan and the church and Jesus Christ working. All right? It's going to be a Took me a lot of work. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to research some of this stuff. I think the best place to start is if you'll open up your Bibles and turn to your Bibles to the book of Appendix of Ruckman, chapter 5. All right? The Appendix of Ruckman, chapter 5. All right? That's the best place, then one of the great places to start in your Bible. All right. All right, let's look at. Now, some of the people might say, oh, you heretic, you know, and they, they might think that I might say something blasphemous. Just calm down, all right? Ruckman is not a book of the Bible. He's not inspired. He's only a man. Yes, he has mistakes and he has his issues, all right? Just calm down, okay? All right. For those of you who enjoyed what I just stated, though, go to Appendix 5, all right? The moon, all right. So then Dr. Ottman has a lot of these gold mines concerning about the moon. And I think that's the best place to start. And the key things about the moon that he says is quite interesting. He says right here, kleptomaniacs and reckless drivers go on a rampage during a full moon. More pyromaniacs torch stores at that time than any other. More assassinations of major political figures and declarations of war take place on a full moon. More computers go loony out of 12 breakdowns in a nine-month period. Five were on full moons. The failure rate is twice as high for test drivers during a full moon. Migraine headaches are greatest on the new moon or the full moon. More patients enter hospitals at this time. Psychiatrist in Uphand Hill, Ohio in 1968 said more patients lose their minds on full moons than new moons. Dito Mental Hospitals in Texas. There are more murders, there are more murders committed at that time. More minor crimes are committed on the full moon. More suicides occur than any other time of the month. Dito attempted suicides. Dito in Canada, he mentions here. Difficulty in falling asleep or staying asleep is caused by the Earth's magnetic field affecting the human system. Births conceived during a full moon have gestation periods of exactly nine lunar months. This means that the day of the moon cycle on which an individual is born is the same day in the moon cycle on which he was conceived. The Maoris in New Zealand say, the moon is the father of all children. The Eskimos say, the moon comes down and ravishes women. In 1978, the birth rate doubled after a full moon. Beans absorb the greatest amount of water just before the full moon and the least amount before the new moon. In the Middle Ages, bloodletting was done by moon stages. Dr. Edison Andrews, a surgeon in Tallahassee, Florida, says the amount of bleeding in surgery is greater during a full moon than any other time. In France, a woman's menstrual cycle is called the moment of the moon. In New Zealand, it is called moon sickness. Doctors Osley and Meneker of New York State University say the most favorable time to conceive a child is on the full moon. In eight years, Henry Lee Lucas murdered 100 girls. This is disturbing. Every time the moon was full, he had intercourt. Uh, intercourse with the corpse or, or a severed head. In 1966, Charles Whitman killed 15 people from a Texas tower on a full moon. Sarah Moore attempted to kill President Ford in 1975 on a full moon. The kidnapping of Patty Harsh took place on a full moon. John Belushi and Elvis Presley both died on a full moon. There are more strokes and traffic accidents on a full moon. Ulcers bleed more at that time. Two-thirds of, uh, and is that how you pronounce it, angina pectoris? Is that right? No. How do you, okay, angina pectoris cases begin on a full moon. Chemicals found in blood after a full moon are not there before the full moon. All right. All right. Crazy stuff. All right. 
Where's scripture based on this? This guy is loony, right? Uh, as I researched, a lot of what you might hear, you're, there were scientific investigations and uh, research done on this, and the conclusion is, is that they would claim that a lot of this is mythology from what you would hear. But here's the interesting thing about it, is that I don't know how much is true or false from what Dr. Upman said, but that guy definitely does not say things just off the cuff. He has something here that he found, and you have to give him a break too. He's from, what, he was born 1921 or something like that? So then obviously scientists who are born like babies at the, uh, at the 1990s, 1980s, and etc., and they make mistakes with their latest scientific research that contradicted their older scientific research, you know, and yet they praise these older scientists anyway despite of their mistakes with the latest update scientific research. We can do the same right here with Dr. Ruckman. So then, but what I discovered, which is intensely interesting, is this. Listen up now. Scientific investigation that was done about all these connections, uh, the correlation with the moon and all this stuff, they'll point out right here that, yeah, some stuff, it did not really fit for them. But then other stuff, they would say that there is no evidence that there is a cause and effect relationship, that there's something causal, because that's what they want to see right here for scientists that the moon caused this not necessarily they would say but when I hear their possible possible explanations to why people thought of these things and why there was a connection guess what their possibilities is just as theoretical and just as way out of bounds. So basically what they're saying then is this. What they're basically saying is there's no explanation then. It's still under investigation and discovery. You know what that should scare you more? It makes you wonder if there might be something spiritual and not natural with your scientific investigation. Maybe it's something science can't explain. Ooh. Makes you wonder. All right, but let's look at the scripture, shall we, and see some spiritual stuff? All right, then. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. First of all, what we know about the moon, what we discovered was several things. One, it has to do with birth, right? And it has to do, two, from what you heard, the information, death, death. Now, if you study the moon gods and goddesses, a lot of different cultures out there and pagans, when they worship these moon deities, they worship these moon deities as if uh, that's connected to birth, with the birth of their children. And then others worship these moon deities as connected to death, when a loved one passes away. And even some pagans connected it to both birth and death with these moon deities. If there's something you read through all of this right here, from the appendix I just read, there's birth and death. A lot of birth and death connected to that one. Isn't that interesting? And then it has to do a lot with uh, two themes that we've always discovered, always, right? That has to do with satanic activity is sex and violence, right? Sex and violence, those are the two psychological trends that Freud always aimed for, is it not? Hmm. It's always love and death, birth and death, sex and violence. Interesting. All right, now, let's start off with Matthew 4. That's the best place to start, Matthew chapter 4. For some people who didn't know about lunatic, how they got that word is because they connected it to moon madness, to the lunar, to the moon. For some of you who didn't know that. So then let's look at Matthew chapter 4 and then we'll read verse 24. Could a, could a lunatic then be connected to something that has to do with demonic activity? 
Absolutely. Now, obviously, we're not saying that uh, everybody who suffers mental conditions that they're demon-possessed. No, that's not the case. But there are some... Uh, but it is interesting that there are cases right here where they came up with that term lunatic to tie it. Why? Because it has to do with something with lunar, something that ties to the moon. And that was the reason why uh, old, even, uh, you got to realize this, even uh, scientists and psychologists, the majority, even during 1900s, believe it or not, they, connect, they tied it all to the moon, which is very, very strange. Is there demonic activity with the moon? There is demonic activity with the lunatic. Look, there are cases of that. Obviously not all, but there are some. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were what? Possessed with devils and those which were lunatic. If you look at another passage, uh, look at the, the second mention of lunatic. If you look that up in your Bible, the second mention of lunatic is a person who was demon-possessed. Yeah. Who was demon-possessed. Yeah. If you look at uh, Mark chapter 5 or chapter 6, there was a demon-possessed guy who was crying out all night. Yeah. So there is, some, there is some demonic activity, which is strange that connects to the moon. All right? And uh, what's the explanation? Well, the explanation is the fun part. Let's just look at these in, uh, scriptural indications first, okay, which is interesting, all right? So we see over here that it connects to uh, lunatic, and then it connects somehow to devil somehow. So there is something demonic, which we just need to see a little bit more. Let's look at other elements. Shall we look at Revelation 12? Revelation 12. Does it connect to birth? Yes. Look at Revelation chapter 12. Look at this right here. Now, uh, isn't it interesting when women want to give birth to children or in labor, they realize the importance somehow with their feet. That's why they talk about acupressure and stuff like that. Now, some of that is false, but then so it's interesting. Scientists and other doctors, they say that there, there is something to that, so they don't want to take chances. That's why they warn about pressure points during acupressure to not do it. So even though that they don't have, uh, they may not believe it scientifically 100%, they don't want to take chances either because they see something with that one. So, guess what? Um, if the lunar stuff and then the moon stuff and then the cycles and all that, it's interesting what Dr. Ruttman Appendix tied it to birth. What if uh, your feet, it's right underneath your feet? Could it give birth? Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the what? Moon under her where? Feet. And what happened? Verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. How about that? Isn't that interesting? Why would the Bible put moon under her feet? That's what bugged me the whole time. I mean, I can, the stars around the head, being clothed with the sun, I can make easy guesses with that one or scriptural indications, but moon under feet, I had such a difficult time. Until I studied a little bit more about the moon and about the feet with the woman. And then not only that, verse 2 showed what happened immediately after that. Has to do with birth. Has to do with birth. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Well, what's the meaning behind this? Well, uh, one, uh, let's look at scriptural indications. Let's keep looking at scriptural indications. But then uh, other passages that we can look at is death. We mentioned that one. And there's crime activity too, right? So it all connects to death. So there's sin. There's crime, which is pretty weird. But I'm going to come to the, one of those verses a little bit last because it connects to uh, the infamous entity that the Antichrist will use in the tribulation, which I should use last, okay? So, we've looked at some indications about the moon, but there's another importance is that 
it does not have uh, it does not have the light itself where it shines. It's a reflection, right? It's a reflection of the light. Mm, but before we do that, let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. It's tied to female. It's tied to female. And five, remember, the moon is supposed to be a light that reflects. It's not something of its own. So basically, the sun is supposed to... Where, if you notice in this picture right here, if you notice in this picture right here, if the sun is supposed to be uh, shining on the earth, notice that the moon can block, uh, not the moon, notice that the earth can block it, right? So the earth can block it right here. And then how basically the scientists teach is that when the sunlight goes, then it casts that shadow from the earth, right? Now notice that I say shadow, okay? Nothing important about this, but we'll come to that later, okay? But now, now stop, okay, stop, all right? I'm not there yet, all right, calm down. All right, man, you Bible believers, man, you kind of give me a problem sometimes with all your knowledge. And don't connect dots now, all right? I'm not done yet. All right, so the earth casts a shadow, okay? The earth casts a shadow, and that's why this part is darkened and this part is lightened. Why? This light is supposed to come from the sun right here, see that? So this part, it's darkened, and this part, because it goes through the bottom of the earth, it's, the earth is not blocking it, this part would show the light, okay? Now, uh, I might not be scientifically angling it right, and I might have put it the wrong direction, but I'm just trying to do very basic, easy, dummy language, that way people can get it, okay? All right, so that's how it works, is that, so then the light from the sun, the moon reflects it, and that's why the moon gives the light to the earth. Now, what does this tie to these two? All right, let's look at Matthew 24. Notice what your Bible thinks. Your Bible thinks that the moon is female. You know that? Your Bible thinks that the moon is female. There are two passages. Look at Matthew chapter 24. Look at verse 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give what? Did it say her light? It says her. The moon is female to the Lord. The moon is female in Scripture. Mythologies, pagan cultures, and everybody, they tend to put the moon as female. Now, why is that? Why is there a tendency right there to put the moon as female? So then, there were people who studied that, and they said this. They said that the reason why is because the sun is known for its brightness and its reflection and its own glory. But then because the female during the old days, and even scripturally, but we're going to look at that a little bit later, is that the woman does not have her own glory. See, she's the glory of the man. The man has his own glory. If you know the scriptures already, you're connecting dots, okay? So the man has his own glory as the sun. That's the reason why back in the old days they did it that way. But then the woman does not have her own glory. She's the glory of the man. That's why she reflects off of that. I wonder if that's scriptural. Let's look at Genesis first. All right, Genesis. And then we'll look at chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Again, the mother is female, the moon. All right, look at this again. Genesis 37. And then I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Scripture with Scripture. Scripture with Scripture. It shows the amazing thing that scientists cannot solve. 1 Corinthians 11. Genesis 37. Here we go. I'm going to read Genesis 37. The Bible says at verse 9, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Now, who is this representing? The sun is the father, the moon is the mother, the eleven stars are Joseph's brother. You want proof? Verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? 
See, the moon is representing the woman. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 now. 1 Corinthians 11. Woman, notice that uh, you are the glory of man. But man, he has the glory of God. Why? Because man, woman is taken after the image of the man. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the what? Glory of the man. How about that? Why? Because man is the glory of God. Why? Because God is the Son. Jesus Christ is the Son. We don't, I don't have to, uh, do I have to show you verses on that or I don't have to? You know that, right? Malachi 4, you, uh, you, Malachi 4 says Jesus is the Son of Righteousness. So that's God. And because man has to take after that, that's why God, sa God says man right here is the Son. That's why pagan cultures and demonic uh, entities and the pagans out there, they knew they knew right there. The devil's peoples know. The devil's people know. Not just God's people. The devil's people know. And then they know also the moon has to tie to something female. Something female. So right here the sun is representing God. It has to be something male. Amen. And then notice right here it's its own glory. So then, that's why the moon, it takes the glory off the sun and then shines. So look at John 1. Who does that picture? Who does that picture? You, the Christian church. The moon is a picture of you, the Christian church. Why? Because in John chapter 1, what you are is that you do have light. Just like the Bible says the moon has her light. But the thing is, you don't have true genuine light. The true genuine light is from the Son, Jesus. John 1. Look at this. John 1. Verse 4. In Him was life, and the life was the what? Light of men. So man has light. But here's the thing. If you look at verse 8. Man, he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the what? True light. This true light, which what? Lighteth every man that cometh into the world. See that? So we as uh, the church, the Christian church, we are like the moon, where we reflect the light from the sun. Why? We're not the true light. We have light. We shine light, but we're not the true light. The true light is from the sun. Jesus Christ. All right, you want me to show you something wild? Why Satan wants the moon now? You ready for this? You ready for this? Look at John 1. All right, I'll tell you why Satan wants it. Notice verse 7. Mankind does what? The same came for a witness to... B Notice what it says. Bear witness of the light. Is that correct? You're supposed to bear light. Look at verse 8. He was, stop, just stop, you Bible believers. Just stop, all right? Don't connect dots yet. All right? you're, ruining my, you're ruining my cool moment here, all right? You're, I want people to say, whoa, after I say it, all right? Not earlier, all right? So verse 8, all right. He was not that light, but was sent to what? Bear witness of that light. What we are are light bearers. Lucifer had that position. You know what his name means, Lucifer? Light bearer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amen. See, Lucifer had something here. Let, you want something deeper? Uh, you want me to go another step? That's why the modern Bible versions, they call him Daystar. Morning star. And Satan loves that because that's supposed to be Jesus Christ. But Satan, no, all he is is bearing the light from the sun, Jesus Christ. Woo! Anybody want to want to run the aisles after that? Wow. Don't, oh, modern Bible versions are a big deal then. See that? 
How about that? So notice the wording, loose, right? Loose it. You notice that right there? Pretty close to the moon's wording, lo lunar and everything. You see that there? You see that there? Woo! But then guess what? Lucifer did not want to be Lucifer, light bearer. What he wanted to do was, I want to be the sun. And then what, you know what God did? All right, you're not, you're not only not going to be the sun, you're not going to even be a light bearer. You go down. And guess what? He had the church replace it as the light bearer. And Satan hates that. Amen. Now, look at the Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. Notice right here, the church is the moon. Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Verse 10, verse 10. Notice the moon is connected to the church. All right, who is uh, the... Uh, I got to stop connecting. Okay, let's go to Song of Solomon 6.10, all right? One by one. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. Who is she? All right, so we know the woman here in Song of Solomon is typifying the church, right? All right, the woman's typifying the church here. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? Notice that she, the moon is tied to the woman here, and also the sun. Hmm. Why is the moon right here, that, which is the church, right? So the church is the moon here. So to the earth, we are supposed to be light bearers, actually. So right here, we're light bearers. We're supposed to reflect the light to the world. And then over here, the church, which is female, is likened where it's the moon and also the sun follows along. Why? Because there's an army coming down. There's an army coming down. Mm, I have to come back here at the mm -hmm. end. So let's come back here, all right? We have to come back here a little bit later on. We have to come back here a little bit later on. And then I'm going to have to come back a little bit here later on. Hopefully I won't forget these two. Okay? All right, with all these things swimming in your minds, we're all going to connect them all together a little bit more, a little bit more at a time. The church is the light bearer, and Satan lost that position, right? So guess what? 1 Corinthians. Look at this now. 1 Let's look at, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, so we're going to look at 1 Corinthians, and then we're going to look at chapter ah, right here. Let's look at, uh, no, it's not 1 Corinthians, excuse me. So it's going to be 2 Corinthians, excuse me. It's going to be 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Amen. And we will look at, oh, I can't believe I don't know that passage. I should know that passage. Uh, chapter 11, yeah, chapter 11, 2 Corinthians 11. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay, so Satan can't reflect God's light anymore. So you know what he wants to do? I'll tell you what he is. If your hand is at 2 Corinthians 11, this is eye-opening. Go to 2 Corinthians 4. This is eye-opening. Look at 2 Corinthians 4. You know what Satan is? He's the darkness of this earth. He has no light. Now, did you hear what I just said? He is darkness. He has no light. Okay? He loves the dark. Why devils will be tied to moon somehow is this. is because of darkness. But the light is supposed to be something positive. See that? The moon's light is supposed to be something good. But the darkness is the devil right there. So guess what? You know what that is? We're in the, we are in the devil system in darkness and we're shining that light from Jesus Christ. 
And Satan, he wants that light so much, but he can't. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world, Satan, hath what? Blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the what? Light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. Verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts. See that? God's light shined in our hearts where it's shining in this dark world. Satan's of darkness. He don't like that. He's not happy, my friend. He's of darkness. So because he's of darkness, guess all he can do is what? 2 Corinthians 11. He can fake the light. That's what he is. He fakes the light. That's why he loves them. He ties to the moon somehow. See, he wants the moon back. But not, more than that, he wants the sun. He wants all light. Because you know what he is? He's not of light. In reality, he's of darkness. And he, and he does not like that. He wants it. No, I'm the light. I'm the light. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is what? Transformed. He is not. It's not that he is. He transforms into an angel of light. <laughs> there you go. So, all right, funny right there. But anyway, so he transforms right here into an angel of light. See that? That's all he can do because he is no longer is that. So he transforms. Why? Because I'll tell you what he truly is. He is darkness. So let's look at right here. We're going to look at uh, Romans. Uh, no, we're going to look at Ephesians. Ephesians 6 and Genesis 1. Ephesians 6. And then we're going to look at Genesis 1. Okay, so then why is it that you hear so much uh, accounts about demonic stuff happening on a full moon? Or werewolves coming out? Full moon, vampires, or some kind of demonic things where full moon is tied to evil entities receiving power or darkness having that effect. But sunlight is something allergic. It just gets demonic entities like vampires to burn up and die. Why? Because the sun will literally burn up the devil's people at Armageddon if you read Malachi 4. All right, but anyways, uh, I just threw that in as a side note, all right? <laughs> Go to Genesis 1 now. Genesis 1. Look at this. I'll tell you why Satan loves that full moon. The idea is this. Look at verse 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the what? Lesser light, which is the moon, to what? To rule the night. The moon is supposed to be the ruler of the night. All right. Now, go to Romans 13. If your hand is at Ephesians 6, keep it there. All right. Go to Romans. And look at chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. All right, the Bible says, and that knowing the time that it is high time to awake, uh, verse 11, Romans 13, 11, and knowing that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation is nearer than when we believe. The night is what? For spent, the day is at hand. So that means we Christians are in the night. That's why we're the moon. Why? Because of the darkness from Satan. The night from Satan. So because of this night from Satan, we are supposed to be the rulers during the night, giving the light during this time. All right? The, this, the night we see right here is the church age right here. We're under that church age in the night. The day is what? Referring to Jesus Christ when that sun shines and then he comes down, right? All right. Notice, let us therefore cast off the what? 
works of darkness. You notice that? All right. If you want to go back to Genesis 1 again so you can look at the wording, I'll say it again. If you go to Genesis 1 oh, again, you'll notice right here that Genesis chapter 1 and then verse 16 says, Rule the night. And it says in verse 18, And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. See that? It is a ruler. It is a ruler of the darkness. Ephesians 6. Satan takes that title, ruler of the darkness. Ephesians chapter 6. He... Verse 12, For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the what? Rulers of the darkness of this world. So notice right here, Satan wants to rule the dark. But guess what? The church is that typification, that example, that we can rule the night. We can rule the darkness. Why? Because of the light that we give. The light that we give. So... Satan, he's a ruler of darkness, but he's not a ruler where he gives light. So I'm the real ruler of darkness. I'm the real ruler of the night, says Lucifer, says Satan. He doesn't want us to take that position. See that? So I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Why? Because we're of the day, we're not of the night. Why are we of the day, not of the night, even though we're the moon that rules in the night? The reason why is because we get that light from the sun. So we're children of the day. During that night and that darkness, we get to rule it. But Satan's like, no, this is my terrain. I'm the real ruler of darkness, and he wants that. Because why? He's of darkness. He has no light. So then he wants that. Don't you think he wants that moon then? He really wants that moon. And he likes it when uh, there are stories and accounts tied to full moon with demonic entities receiving full power or something like that. He likes all of that connected. It's tied to something demonic. Now, if the church is during that night... Uh, then there must be some evil people during the night, right? Uh, who are some evil people, that demonic people we can think of? Well, let's take one, which is crazy, a werewolf, right? I'm going to tell you something very crazy, all right? The crazy thing is, in the church age, there are werewolves, and in the, after the church age, there are vampires, all right, ready to throw off your brain cells and scream heresy after that? <laughs> In the church age, there are werewolves, and after the church age, there are vampires. Why? Because of the night. What do you mean, Pastor? All right, then. So, let's look at several scriptures right here. We're going to look at the book of uh, Zephaniah 3, Zephaniah 3. And then Matthew 7. I want you to go to Matthew 7. And then I want you to go to Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3. All right, what do I mean by a werewolf? Basically, it's a man that's a wolf, right? That's the idea. Now, I wonder if in your Bible, or if you read your Bible, if you never read your Bible, then it's about time you should read your Bible. Did the Bible ever have a man with a wolf? Yes. The Bible talks a lot about uh, wolf man. Look what God did right here. He put a wolf in a man right here. What is this man wolf, this weird wolf? What they are is because that's why wolves are tied to moons and stuff like that. The scripture thinks so if you don't believe me. Look at Zephaniah 3 and look at verse 3. The Bible says, Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are what? Evening wolves. God connects wolves to the night. Another one is Habakkuk 1. Habakkuk 1. Your hand's still at Matthew, all right? Go to Habakkuk 1. Go to Habakkuk. Once you go to Habakkuk chapter 1, look at verse 8. Habakkuk chapter 1, and we'll read verse 8. The Bible says their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the 
evening wolves. So God connects wolf to the night. But he likens these rulers here, right? You notice that? False leaders right here. Wicked leaders right here to wolves of the night. Did God connect a false leader to a wolf? Yes, Matthew 7. Those are false pastors. They're the werewolves. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are what? Ravening wolves. See that? So the church is in the night, shining the light, and we're battling werewolves right now. Didn't you know that? San Jose Bible Baptist Church is battling werewolf Joel Osteen, werewolf Rick Ward, werewolf Todd Friel, werewolf John MacArthur, werewolf uh, Ray Comfort, werewolf... Should I go on or did I offend some people? That, those are the werewolves that is spiritually pictured in your Bible. How about that? They're called wolves and they're during the night, the church age. And they are men who are likened to wolves. There's your man wolf right there. How about that? What do you mean vampires after the church age? They are first werewolves during the church age. And they like to seek after the sheep. And they eat and they... Uh, isn't that what Matthew 7 said? Verse 15, they come in sheep's clothing. They come like sheep because they want to eat the sheep. And this is all done spiritually, all right? So this werewolf thing is all spiritually. But when they're that vampire, they do it literally. They eat their blood literally. They intake humans literally. All right. Uh, do we have scripture? <laughs> Let's look at the book of... Uh, Isaiah. Uh, let's look at Isaiah and then Psalms. Let's look at Isaiah and Psalms. All right, we're going to look at two passages here. Scriptures can be surely amazing, can it not? All right, let's look at the book of Psalms 44. We're going to look at Psalms 44. We'll look at Psalms 44. And then uh, I want you to turn to also at Isaiah 6. Now, Isaiah 6, we're going to, I want you to bookmark that, okay? We're going to eventually come here because in Psalms 44, we're going to have some fun going through Scripture with Scripture, okay? All right, then. So, if we were to come over here. All right. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 44, all right? Psalm 44. You know what this is? Notice right here at verse 11, Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat and hast scattered us among the heathen. Right? Look at verse 22. Yea, for thy sake are we killed all the day along. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Remember the werewolves here are spiritually eating the sheep. Right here in Psalms 44, they're killing like Killing them literally, physically, as if they were eating sheep. But guess what? They really intake and eat the sheep. But this is tribulation context. Didn't you know that? No, it's not tribulation context. You want me to show you why this is tribulation context? This is definitely tribulation context because one, the book of Psalms is the, a lot of the majority of the portion is second advent. That's warning one. That's why we know that when you read Psalms, you've got to be aware, like, I wonder if this can apply to the tribulation. Because there's a huge portion that applies. But this becomes even big when you look at verse 19. Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death. How about that? So there's a shadow of death and dragons who kills all these Jews. Now keep your hand at Psalms 44 and go to the book of Psalms chapter 100. Psalms chapter 121. 121. Keep your hand at Psalms 44 though and go to Psalms 121. Look at this. Look at this. Psalms 121. 
Now, notice what God says to the Jewish people here. The Jews, they're suffering under persecution and they're having a psalm of deliverance. Lord, deliver me from my enemies. But notice right here, this is way, way strange. If you look at Psalms chapter 121, verse, let's see right here, verse 2. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Wait a minute. This moon is harming. What in the world? How does the moon harm the Jews? That don't make sense. Uh, there are some commentators that says, yeah, the, the, the Jews, they're not going to get a sunburn from the sunlight. No, that ain't what that is right there. All right? That's not God's protection right here that he's going to protect them from a sunburn or something. This is something really dramatic, cataclysmic, like supernaturally happened where the sun scorches the people. When does that happen? Tribulation. Why? Because Revelation 16. You can let go of Psalms 121. Go to Revelation 16. But don't you dare get away from Isaiah 6 and Psalms 44, all right? I right, go to Revelation 16. Revelation chapter 16. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. I mean, come on. When do the Jews get protected from the sun's heat? And then they get delivered from their enemy. There's only one timeline you can fit out of all the portions in your scripture. That's only the tribulation where Jews are protected from their enemies from the Antichrist. And God shields them from the scorching sun. Look at verse 9. No, verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. Why, there's your sun that they were protected from. But it does not make sense about the moon. How does the moon, the Jews get protected by the moon? Look at the book of Amos. Look at the book of Amos. You know what this is? Let's, uh, the, uh, the moon is called this term when you look at the book of Amos chapter 5. Amos 5, 8. Amos chapter 5. And then we'll read verse 8. The moon is also called shadow of death. Or if shadow of death is not the moon, somehow this shadow of death is tied to the night or the moon. That would be the more accurate term. Look at Amos chapter 5. If you don't believe me, that connects to moon or night. Look at Amos 5, 8. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and... Okay, and turneth the shadow of death, right, into the what? Morning, and maketh the what? Day, dark with night. Look at the, con the comparison here. Day versus night. Shadow of death versus morning. So what is shadow of death it, then? It's connected, no doubt, to night. See that? There's no doubt about it. Shadow of death is connected to night, to moon, somehow. Now the question is, why, Pastor? Uh, remember, the earth cast a shadow. You know what the moon does during the night? That's how you can get your shadows. How do you get the shadows? When there's moonlight as well. When you get that moonlight, and you get that moonlight coming out, that's where you can finally get your shadows coming out. Hence, if Satan, during the tribulation, how, can he sm uh, how does he want to get the Jews? He wants to get that moon. If he gets that moon, and somehow the full moon for some weird reason, he could get his shadow of death to chase after the Jews and to kill them. And the Jews want to be delivered 
from the shadow of death. I don't what, what, what? Go to Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Did you forget verse 19? Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of what? Dragons. dragons. Well, they don't have that. The Jews don't get dragons during that time when they're running away from persecution. And covered us with the what? Shadow of death. They get that. And they're being killed at verse 22. Jews are getting killed. That ties to dragon. Jews are getting persecuted. That ties to dragon with the shadow of death. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12. There's a dragon chasing and persecuting the Jews in the tribulation, by the way. Well, that never happened during the Old Testament. That never happened during the church age. What other time period are you going to put this then at? It makes the most sense is tribulation. That's the most sense. Look at Revelation chapter 12. And then look at verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's the Jews, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So look at right here. The dragon is attacking the seed, the Jews, right? When he's attacking the seed, it's literal eating the seed. Isaiah 6. Now you go to Isaiah 6, all right? Now look at this, Isaiah 6. Look at the Is Israelites. Remember Psalms 44? We're like sheep. The heathen is eating us up. And that connects to shadow of death and dragon. Isaiah 6. This is the Jews when they get persecuted from the Antichrist. You know what the Bible says, verse 13? But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return and shall be eaten as a tail tree. So just like you've seen a tail tree being eaten up, God's showing it's going to be literally eaten up. It's literal eating because, and as an oak, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves, so the what? Holy seed shall be the substance, what? Like the substance in the oak tree where you can eat. See that? It's literal eating. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. The dragon made war with the remnant of her seed. Basically then, here's the idea what this has to do with the moon, shadow of death, dragon, and the nation of Israel. You ready now? Let's look... Basically, the book of Psalms says, when you tie it with Psalms 44 and Revelation 12, that there is no doubt that the only time period, where and Revelation 16, there's no doubt that the only time period, the moon, where it's going to smite the children of Israel, and the children of Israel needs protection, is during the tribulation. How in the world the moon can uh, attack the children of Israel? There's only one shadow of death. Why? Because if you look at the book of Psalms, the Jews says, protect us from the shadow of death. If you look at the book of Amos, shadow of death is connected to nighttime, to the moon. And then when you look at Psalms chapter uh, 44, what happens? The Jews are saying, we're being eaten up like sheep. The heathen is eating us up because the dragons are getting us with the shadow of death. When you look at Revelation chapter 12 and Isaiah 6, the dragon is attacking the Jews and the eating up is literal eating up of the seed. So, in basically, now here's the conclusion. In the, basically, in the church age, during the night, here are those false, pre, uh, those false people spiritually eating up God's people or people. And then what happens is when the church goes up at the rapture and they're gone and then the tribulation happens from the werewolves, they turn into vampires. And where they used to spiritually eat up people, now they literally eat up people. Just like the werewolves, they spiritually ate sheep. The vampires literally eat sheep. Psalms 44. How about that? 
That's some wild stuff right there, right? That wild connection right there. That is something else right there. That's what's going to happen during the tribulation. So God, he needs to protect his people, his sheep, that time. Now, uh, if we, we, that shadow of death then, that devil, he's somehow sending this shadow of death, whatever it is, to try to attack the Jews. That's why the, the Jews, they say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Why? They're a sheep in need of a shepherd, protection from the shadow of death. So the Antichrist, the devil, he's going to send his shadow of death from the moon, which might explain why in the world are there cattle mutilations at night with UFO activity. And the devil is a cow, remember? He's a cattle. And then people claim they find these pyramid structures in moon. Why are there so much demonic activity in the moon? The devil wants that moon. Why? It has to do with his shadow of death that he wants to bring down to attack the Jews. And not only that, he wants to take the glory of the church for himself. Is that already too deep for you? Or is your mind swimming along and somehow connecting the dots somewhere? That's just crazy stuff right there. See, that's what Satan, why he wants with the moon, he, it's going to eventually be important to him because of that shadow of death. That's why uh, the full moon thing, it would make more sense to me because of shadows. He likes that shadow of death. Shadow of death is connected to night and moon. You saw that right there. Man, wild stuff right there. Well, anyways, uh, let me show you a cool one now. All right, let's look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And then I want you to go to Colossians Let's go to Matthew 24. And then we'll look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2. And then I want you to go to Matthew 24. Now, didn't you know in your Bible... New moon is important to God. You might say, why is the new moon important to God? Because where it's tied to the sun right here, there's a difference with a new moon and a full moon. What's the difference? All right, so here's the idea. New moon is where the moon, where, it's, where it goes around the earth. If the moon is on this side, right, then he's between the sun and the earth, right? When this moon is between the sun and the earth, what happens? The sun completely, uh, what happens is sometimes what you get is called a solar eclipse, all right? And this solar eclipse is those moments where the moon's light, you don't see it. It's more of darkness now. Why? Because you don't get that shadow over here with that light. But what happens is if you get the moon on this side right here of the earth, you can get a full moon. Right here is new moon where you can't see the light. It's darkness because of what? That, that light behind it and it's like a shadow. That's the idea. But then over here, the reason why this can be a full moon when it's behind the earth is why? Because the moon is not directly in the center behind the earth over here. It's tilted up or above. So then when you get to this point, you can get the complete, you don't, you can get the complete sunlight because of that tilt of the moon and then that earth's shadow is not cast. So then that's why you can get the full moon completely on the opposite side. Why? Because your shadow is no longer there because the moon is tilted either upward or downward where the earth's shadow don't cast on it. But when it comes over here, it's a new moon. Why? Because of that, sun, uh, that sunlight over there that's behind the moon and now it's completely a black thing, shadow. So then the moon does not, have, does not give the full light over here that reflects just like the full moon does over on that side. Okay? All right. Now, now that I explain all of that, here's the idea. All right? Now that I explain all of that, you know what the Bible says about new moons? 
they are to be observed. Right when they're here. Not when the moon, when it's full. And it's shining. It's right over here. Why? Look at, you know why? It's the beginning. The Hebrew calendars go by lunar. And what they do is that they have their festivals and feasts and sacrifices. God demands sacrifices on what? New moons. He wants it on new moons. Why? It's the beginning of something. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. And then we'll read verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of unholy day or of the new moon. See that? Or of the sa Sabbath days. See the Jews, they observe these sacrifices done in new moons. Just type down new moon. It's all over in your Bible. New moons, that's where they start a festivity or something. Now, go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And then I want you to look at verse... Uh, Matthew chapter 24, and then we'll read verse 29. Matthew 24, we'll read verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Okay, keep your hand there. Go to Acts 2. Acts 2. Acts 2. Go to Acts chapter 2. Go to Acts chapter 2. And then I want you to turn to verse 20. Acts 2.20. There's only one time the Bible would mention about the full moon. Alright? For some of you who don't know, sometimes in full moons, you know what you get? Sometimes if you get a full moon, if you don't really get the earth and all of that blocking it, then what happens is when you really come to that full moon where it gets the full glory of the sun and the sun is setting, you know what you get? A blood moon. That's how you get... Those are lunar eclipses, all right? Solar eclipses is where that new moon is over there, and by that rare chance, it can completely block out the sun, and it becomes like black. And it looks apocalyptic. People tied it to the apocalypse, to the end of the world, a new moon. But they also tie it to the blood moon as something apocalyptic, as the end of the world. Look at Math, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Now, uh, for some of you who don't know the Rayleigh scattering, all right, what that is is this. Is, uh, I, I can't say all this scientifically and then say it accurately, but basically how you get the colors of red and all that is because it depends on those dust particles and the atmosphere. In urban cities, you see it as more bleeding red. Why is that? Because of the dirty stuff in the air and then light bends and affects the lighting. But if you go to the clear area where it's not really urban, the lighting's not more red, it's more white. For, you, for some of you who don't know, the sun should be white, actually. It's not yellow. But the reason why it comes up is because of our eye's vision about how far it can reach, and it has to do with Rayleigh scattering. But the point is this. The point is, is that the reason why this can turn red right here is because it depends on that particle. And the more heavy the particle, whatever it is, the more bleeding red it could be for the moon, and not only that, for the sun. How do you get it where the sun gets darkened and the moon bleeding? It's because the Lord, ha sometimes, it, uh, you know what's interesting? It could be more done through volcanic activity. So then, what if the Lord sends this kind of supernatural darkness? And then because of that, that's the reason why it's bleeding red and then the sun becomes black. And that's why in some verses in the Bible, it'll say the moon is blood, but then it'll say also the moon is dark. Why would it say that? Because the Lord did something right here. Is there volcanic ash activity? Is there something fiery? Yes, because someone is coming. 2 Thessalonians 1 and Malachi 4. 2 Thessalonians 1 and Malachi 4. You know what? Jesus Christ... He's coming down. 
with eternal fire. Amen. And when he comes down, man, it affects the heavy particles of the atmosphere right there. And he leaves a trail where it opens up down to hell itself. Did that went way over your heads? Okay. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians, and then we'll look at chapter 1. All right, look at, look at this. Hell is coming down with Jesus. Look at Malachi 4. Malachi 4. The Bible says at verse 1, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day shall, that cometh shall burn them up. Notice the language of hell right here on the wicked. But this is tied to, at verse 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, what? A rise, sunrise right here. If there's a sunrise, then what happens if, if it helps with that bleeding red stuff, then that moon can become more blood moon right there. And not only that, there is that darkness, that heavy particle that affects it, that turns into all of this. Why? Because of hell here. Hell is called outer darkness. And there's no doubt Jesus Christ is bringing hell with him when he judges the enemies. It says it right there, right at Malachi 4.1. If you don't believe me, 2 Thessalonians 1, look at verse, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 8, uh, verse 7, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. See that? Taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with what? Everlasting. Everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. And if you read the Bible, the Bible also says that darkness is beneath His feet when He comes. So that's why you can get the sun dark and the moon blood and all that. It's a supernatural thing Jesus Christ is bringing with him. It affects, uh, you thought the volcanic ash activity that affects the atmosphere, the, all the dust particles in the atmosphere is heavy and it makes it so bleeding red. You don't know what bleeding red is, man. Jesus Christ comes down from heaven, bringing down where he's going to split hell wide open for him and darkness is beneath his feet and then he leaves off a trail of bleeding red blood because he's that sunrise coming out, that bleeding red. That's what Jesus Christ does because he's the day star. And Lucifer, Lucifer wanted to be the day star. He wanted to take them. Uh, he wanted to be the light bearer, and he wanted to get the darkness. Guess what? Jesus Christ cast that prince of darkness down to hell, a place of outer darkness. Why? Because that's where he belongs. And there is your King James Bible study on the moon. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. What? The army. Oh yes, the army. I'm so sorry. The army. Why do they, uh, and then the crime, right? So then the crime is committed. Thank you so much. All right, let me, ex let me say two verses, all right? And then I'll close with the word of prayer, all right? The two verses about why there's crime at night, which would make sense now, is Job 34.22. Job 34.22 says, There is no shadow, there is no shadow of death where the workers of iniquity hide themselves. Look at that. Crime done in the night. And it's connected to shadow of death. How about that? Crime connected to the moon right there. Uh, the army, what does that have to do? You know why? If you look at Revelation 19, when Jesus Christ comes down bleeding red, the moon, the church, is the army that follows along with him. And why is she, she has the glow of the sun? The sun is coming down because the moon reflects from the sun and the sun and the moon, guess what? That sun and moon, which is Jesus and the church, come down and conquer the ruler of darkness. No wonder Satan wants to conquer the sun and the moon and the stars and he wanted the people to worship that in outer space. All right, Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teachings have been a blessing to the hearers. It was a lot of... Uh, a lot of deep meat, and I hope that the connections would be able to become more clear and the scriptures would become more alive for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.